Cheers, George. Congratulations. Welcome to the Art of Engineering. My name is Lena, and I'm the new member of the team. In this episode my loser lunatic boss tries to build a 40 meter receiver. Please let me know in the comments section if I should host all future episodes. 73 and over to VK2AOE what a chump. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Art of Engineering. In today's episode, we managed to get our direct conversion receiver going for the SOTA rig that I'm presently building. I also have a play with my mate Chris, CW Chris, and we test the receiver and do a very quick transmission from an undisclosed location in the inner west of Sydney. Not exactly DX, but hey, we just wanted to have a play with the receiver. It's always fun to play radio, and of course that led into a whole lot of mucking around with antennas, testing to see whether we could get into uh, reverse beacons, and of course in the end we even fired up the TS520 and had a crack with that at lower power so that we don't blow up the uh, antenna selector like I did last time. All of that and much, much more, so stick around and see how it all unfolds. Let's go. Please pardon the hand-carried filming. It will not happen for long. I know it makes people motion sick quite often. I have started the process of building this receiver. I'm going to be using uh, this part of this design here. I think it's called the Little Mate Transceiver for 40 and 80 meters. This is from Projects for the Radio Amateur, uh, volumes one to four. This is volume two. And uh, I've talked about this wonderful series of books uh, on my channel, and I'll put a link below to the review I did of this, these particular books. I've already built a power supply, a field strength meter. I've cleaned up a, a, a supply that I had that was making a lot of noise, a switch mode supply. Already three or four designs. And uh, what I did was I went and bought a whole series of any 602s because a lot of the Sprat designs I'm looking at and these designs use this any 602. It's not state of the art. It's quite an old chip but you can still get them. And I'm just having fun with the simplicity and I guess the nostalgia of building these things as well. And I'm hoping I get a receiver that works quite well. I know that uh, Drew has looked at the performance of the NE602 and he uses it in a double balance configuration uh, feeding into an operational amplifier. And that makes this perform a lot better than a lot of the other designs that don't use it in double balance configuration. So I'm happy to follow Drew Diamond because he's always very thorough in his investigations. All the Sprat designs are uh, designed by people like myself who have great intentions and love exploring, but uh, Drew comes at it with a very technical perspective and obviously the um, great deal of knowledge that he has from years and years as a, an engineer in telecommunications and whatnot. So Drew's also very good at giving you all the information you need in these designs, how to wind toroids. He gives you extensive parts lists, instructions to adjust, et cetera, et cetera. So I cannot express enough gratitude to Drew for this series of books. They are fantastic, and I will keep screaming from mountaintops how wonderful they are. And the more books you have as a home designer, the better. I'm off to J Car now to uh, to get these parts. J Car, not the most uh, cheap place to go and shop, but uh, I love the convenience. I'm going to go and get these parts, and then I can start ugly building this what receiver. We don't know, and. I And there we have it, folks. $18 later. And I always make sure that I bring the parts list so I can cross them off. And also, just because it just makes it so much easier for them than rather than, than, rather than having the folks behind the counter start trying to look up codes. Back home now, start building. Okay, a little bit of a progress report while we're working FT8 in the background. Uh, this is the progress thus far. And we're working dead bug style with our uh, integrated circuits and working ugly style. I have cut out lots and lots of squares and I do this rough and ready using the, uh, the tin snips. And there is, God, I'll give you a little bit more light on this, uh, on the subject. There is the, uh, the little pads that I cut out and I cut the pads out and glue them down with a little dab of 
super glue and I have to try not to glue my fingers to everything, which is what normally happens. I've written out where my integrated circuits are because the only problem with dead bug style, of course, is that uh, if you're dealing with a, a dual inline package that's eight pins and you glue it upside down, you don't know which one is which. So up the top here, we have our NE602. And then down here, we have the LM741, which is the operational amplifier, which allows us to use the NE602 in a double balanced mixer form. And down here is our LM3, I think it's LM386 audio amplifier um, chip. So I've just got to get the potentiometer in here. Uh, we haven't got any of the transmit switching and all that sort of stuff happening yet. And I haven't really thought about how I'm going to do that. But I do know, well, I have thought a little bit. I'm going to be using this switch to, to switch between the three different banks. So I'll have a, an upper CW transmit and a lower CW transmit so I can go either side of the actual carrier and in the center will be receive. And this will also allow me to not only switch between the three banks, but also switch on and off power to various parts of the circuit. So hopefully that will um, allow me to create a reasonable simulation of a transceiver. Now I am really really tempted to uh, fire this up and see if it works but that would be a really dumb move because I, I'm really tired and it's midnight and if the smoke comes out I make a lot of work for myself so what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut down shop and tomorrow is a new day we'll come back we'll have a look at the wiring make sure it's all correct and then hopefully we're heading towards having a receiver that works fingers crossed. Well, tomorrow was a new day, but unfortunately, my little mate, Soxy the Wonder Cat, the king of Cogra, disappeared. And uh, I spent the best part of the day and the night, we all did, running around the neighborhood, shaking the food canister, trying to get him to come home. He's never not come home for dinner in like 14 years. We've never had a night where he hasn't returned very unlike him to just disappear. So I made posters. I'll uh, show you one of those posters in the uh, here or here and uh, ran around late at night, putting them all up on poles around the neighborhood. And of course at 4.30 this morning, who should wander in but uh, our missing cat. So with the cat catastrophe <laughs> over, we managed to get back to the home brewing efforts and finish the receiver section. Everywhere. Uh, this is the test circuit, that how we're gonna do it. I've had a quick look at the wiring. I still need to add a coupling capacitor to this thing to, uh, to couple the oscillator. Now the oscillator is the prog rock, and the prog rock is going to be the oscillator for both this transmitter section, which we've already done a QSO on, so link below, and I'll put it in the end screen as well the uh, link for this QSO that I have on this particular device here. I've also done a video on how I modified this low pass filter using higher quality capacitors. I called them NPO capacitors rather than ceramic, but they are actually still ceramic capacitors. They are just a much higher quality ceramic capacitor with a higher voltage rating and a much better uh, response to changes in temperature, etc. So much more efficient. And we are going to uh, get our coupling capacitor on here so we can couple the signal from the prog rock into the receiver and we're just going to see whether the receiver is actually operational now we we're going to have to get our five volts from the five volt regulator some of these chips are operating off five volts and some of them are requiring 12 volts so we'll get all our voltages correct and we'll uh, just plug in a very very makeshift antenna um, at some point in time i'm probably going to have to have the one outlet obviously and do some switching for transmit and receive all that's going to have to happen via this switch that we talked about earlier on but for the time being now all i want to do is make sure that i've got a receiver that works and a transmitter that works and then we're going to worry about all the little fine details as to how we're going to make them work together as a transceiver let's go we've checked our wiring and this is our antenna connection here just a very makeshift piece of wire we're just going to tune the bandpass filter in here for maximum noise and as per the instructions, the wonderful instructions by Drew Diamond, projects for the Radio Amateur Volume 2. Okay, here goes nothing. That loud noise is the fan. It does sound like it's motorboating. 
is not good. So the LM386 is doing what it normally does. I've set up my OzQRP DC transceiver that works on 40 meters and it's on 7025 into the dummy load. Of course, I've got this piece of wire plugged in as an antenna. Let's just see if we hear anything. Well, something's coming out, but like we do still have some problems with the LM386. I put into Google taming the LM386 and of course, who should come up but the uh, master of everything, uh, Mr. Peter Parker. Cannot tell you how many times this gentleman has saved my bacon when it comes to, uh, to homebrew. And basically he talks about supply decoupling, which I know about. You're basically isolating one stage from another to stop that oscillation from happening. But what that made me do was go and check the supply decoupling in the design. And of course, that's what was missing. So we've now done that. And uh, as you can hear here, I'll move the microphone to the actual speaker so that uh, we're actually doing, I'll move the microphone so you can actually hear the difference. Okay, so that's into the dummy load. If we go to the antenna, and you can hear they're uh, quite loud and no motorboating from the actual speaker. So happy days. What I've done now is I've got my nano VNA hooked up to my NFED half wave outside, transmitting a tiny, tiny amount of power, obviously, on 7025. And I'm going to very, very quickly get myself tuned in. That seems about as loud as I can make it. Pardon me if I'm just a little bit excited, but uh, that's the first time I've had a receiver work that quickly, that easily. But, you know, there's a lot to go to make this into a transceiver. But if I can get a receiver that's working on this frequency, there's still going to be issues perhaps with bleed through on the oscillator, with the prog rock, all that sort of stuff. But it's it's still the bare bones for a transceiver. This is 10 meters of pre-made cable, so it should work nicely. I do need to make up a cable to run from the operating console, which is over here, which you see all the time in the videos, over to the test bench where we're working now so that when I'm building stuff, I don't have to be constantly taking stuff over the operating position, which always means that I sometimes solder over there, which is the opportunity for me to burn a hole in something or leave leads in the wrong place that have been cut off, all that sort of stuff that can cause havoc with operating equipment. So the idea is to separate the two spaces. So once I've got a cable in place, I'll be able to switch over to it on the Magic Antenna Box. At the moment, I'm going to use a lead that I'm already using for the SDR, um, and I'm just going to put a joiner on and connect this up so that we are connected to the antenna. And then I'm going to ask my mate, VK2 and AP Chris to uh, drop me a carrier on uh, 7025 and a few Vs just to see if it actually can receive from the remote inner west of Sydney a few Ks away. <laughs> so as you can see here, the Nano VNA can make a handy little beacon to uh, just test to see whether you're actually uh, picking anything up. <laughs> I've got one frequency that I can uh, that I can use, but uh, we are we at the moment. Yeah, I can I can jump back on the putty terminal and change it if it, someone comes up on here. I am now recording. I'm just going to put the mic near the speaker. So George, you'd like a uh, something sent to you? We'll uh, see what we can do for you, mate.
Cheers, George. Congratulations. Let's put some of the uh, key into whiskey, shall we? Ooh. Okay. Well, I'm I'm doing it this end. We have the uh, Lark Christmas cask from the beautiful Isle of Tasmania. As you can see, it's been drunk a lot, <laughs> too much, and um, yes. This end we're celebrating the christening of this. I won't pour any on it because I'll probably blow it up. Oh, gee, that's good. Woo! Thanks for sticking around right till the end of this video. Unfortunately, Lena has found alternative employment. I'm the new co-host Olga. Please remember to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next episode of The Art of Engineering 73.